inside me is calling me deeper to step out on the water my eyes fixed on jesus and my heart's beating faster the water is rising but i Mercy over judgment. That's our message for today. Um, and that's part of living a life glorifying God. I want to welcome each one of you that's watching. I want to welcome the groups and the churches that is watching. I want to welcome you that is maybe scrolling and just looking at this and watching this for the first time. Take some time, just listen to the message and allow God and the Holy Spirit to speak to you. I believe Jesus and the church is everything. I believe it's the hope of God. For the world i believe that jesus christ touches people saves people and the holy spirit is the one that's indwelling in our hearts and i really encourage you to go through this message and allow god to come and speak to you let's just pray father lord thank you for your grace holy spirit thank you for your presence lord doesn't matter if it's one person two person watching on that side lord you want to speak to them each one individually as a group collectively where they are for thank you holy spirit that the word of god is active is alive and holy spirit that you are alive thank you that we are can have the joy of the lord in our hearts when we share your message but i pray lord that there's many people that are so hungry for you so many people that is desperate for you so many people that have got areas in their life that they need a touch of god lord maybe today be one of those days where from today you're going to touch them you're going to heal them you're going to restore them you're going to open up to them their identity in christ and who they are in christ jesus in jesus name amen amen i'm so excited to share this message with you and i believe god wants to speak to you through this word i'm going to dig and jump right into it and we're going to start reading out of luke chapter 10 verse 25 and it reads as follows 
And a lawyer stood up and put him to the test as Jesus now saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, What is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus answered to him and said, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But wishing to justify himself, he said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Now we get to the passage we actually want to get to today. And it's the parable of the Good Samaritan. Jesus replied and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers. And they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now, that's not a very nice place to be at if you're on a journey and you walk on this road. But my first subtitle, sub-idea for today's message is be watchful. Be watchful on this road that you're traveling. You see this road from Jerusalem to Jericho was about 28 kilometers. And it was a, a, a road that was downhill, rocky, patchy, not much grass or green trees. Um, but it was a, a, a route that was traveled uh, frequently because of the fact that people did business, people traded, people had to go to Jericho because there was some stuff that they could do in Jericho that they could not do in Jerusalem. So it was a nece necessary travel and a road to travel. And when we read the story further, we'll see that many people travel that road. And this road, I just want to stop here and I want you to close your eyes and see that this road from Jerusalem to Jericho wants to signify and symbolize today the journey of our lives. Just for a moment, let's take a comparison and make a comparison with this journey of the Good Samaritan that came along with the guy that was beaten up. We're going to get to it now. Compares to your life and compares to my life, the journey of life, the life and the road that we walk on life. And all of us know that on the life that we and the road that we walk in life, this road that we travel, this journey that we're on, with all the altars that we get to and God does doing miracles on the road, we also find and experience difficult circumstances. But especially, especially these dangers that lurk on the side. If you think about the enemy, it wants to attack us. And um, let me put it to you in this way. As we go through the journey of life, we all know we were at one stage small children or a baby. And I don't know about you, but I've seen toddlers and babies take their little finger going to the wall plug and the electric plug and thinking in which one of the three, if you're in South Africa, will I put my finger? And we're all on the side and we're like, don't put your finger into the plug. But the baby is so small, the baby does not know. And I just want to say to you that that's exactly how on this road of life, where we journey, usually it goes because we grow up on this, on this road and there's dangers lurking, some we don't know. And when we grow up, we know, we know better. And 1 Peter 5 verse 8 with us, be watchful, tells us, be sober-minded, be watchful. Uh, your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, seeking someone to devour. And he says the following, he says, be watchful. Now, in the watchful there in the Greek means to stay awake. Wake up if you're asleep. Be watchful. Stay awake. And be, uh, come awake. You know, wake up if, you, if you're asleep in the circumstances. Matthew 7 verse 14 says, For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it is few. Now, you, I'll show you a picture quickly of this road between Jerusalem and Jericho. Now you'll see it. It's not a very wide road. It's a narrow road. But I believe the journey that we're on in life, if you're living it in God's way, is a narrow way because the world lives in a different way. Everything goes. Anything goes. You can whatever you want. You yourself can be a God if you really want to. But that's not the way that we as Christians live. But this is the road that we travel on. So you get, you get people that travel that's, that's saved, that's Christians on this road of life. And then you get people that's not safe. That's not Christians that travel on this road of life. And both people, both types of people can get hurt. Both type of, types of people can, the, the enemy can destroy. And if you're a Christian, you understand how the, the enemy destroys unbelievers and attacks unbelievers. But we also know that the, the, the inner devil doesn't care. As a, as a matter of fact, that if you're a Christian, he'll come for you more in a, in a bigger way. 
But praise be it to Jesus because we've got the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That means the devil and his demons is not stronger than you and the Holy Spirit inside of you. And the angels and God that is protecting and looking after us. No, we are much stronger. When we walk into an area, the light of Jesus Christ walks in with us. The power of the Holy Spirit. Then darkness must flee because the light has come. Your light has come. In, 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 in the place, in the area that God has placed you. I believe the first, if we look at the story, there's a perspective of being watchful, but understanding and remembering that there's a devil that wants to attack us and wants to destroy us and wants to steal from us and wants to torment us. And that's the first perspective that there is an enemy. We have to realize that on this road and this journey, there's traps. On this road and this journey, there's a narrow road. And we have to be vigilant. We have to stay awake. We have to be sober and make sure that we stay on God's uh, plan and God's life for, 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 for our lives. In Psalm 119 verse 105 it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That's why we as Christians have got hope. Because we've got God's word and we know that when we walk in God's word, nothing evil can come against us. That means we don't enter into any dark cave with any dark things and temptations along the way and along the road because God's word is a lamp to our feet. It doesn't mean there's not going to be storms along the way. It doesn't mean there might not be loss along the way. But God's word is a lamp to our feet in the way that we walk. And the Bible says that God works together all things for good for those that He loves. All things for good for those that He loves. And also our journey of determination brings glory to God because every step we take into in obedience to the living King brings glory to Him. Every time we endure through temptations, it brings glory to Him. Every time we there's opposition that comes against us and we stand firm for Jesus Christ, no matter how the storm looks, we give glory to Him because God gets glorified through our lives. That's a living sacrifice to Him. Uh, the Bible says in that verse I just read, the man fell into the robbers. The Greek there is peripipitu. It means to be surrounded with, surrounded with or fall into something you're surrounded with, to be surrounded with. And just think about it. When we live in this world, we're surrounded with many things. At this point in time in the world, it's corona and va vaccines and anti-vaccines and this must we do and this must we not do. And we're like, Lord... And you've got the extremists on the one side and they all think they're right. You've got the extremists on the other side and they all think they're right. And they're attacking each other all over the place. And your phone messages is the one side is the anti-vaxxers and the other side is the pro-vaxxers. But in any case, what I'm saying is we're surrounded with, with, with many things in our lives. And in this time period, we're living in a glorious time. Glorious time. Because there's more people being saved right now than ever before in history. There's more people coming to Christ than ever before in history. You know why? Because the world's broken and people need Jesus. And do you know what? We've got a hope of glory that lives inside of us that no matter what our circumstances is, that God is alive. I want to read for you James 1 verse 13. It says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. And he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire within it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and when fully, fully grown, brings forth death. And uh, that's when uh, sin comes from your heart. It starts with a thought, or thought gets placed into your head. But we've got a choice what we want to do with that thought. That's why the Bible says take the thought captive. What does it mean to take the thought captive? It means don't act or live out. The thought, it stays there, you keep it captivated, and you let it die. You try to say, Lord, take this thought away from me. Don't act on it. Because the longer you hold on to that thought, the longer you hold on to that thought, the easier it becomes for you to enter your heart. And then it, you act on it, then it becomes sin. And when you prolong in sin, it becomes death in different ways in your life. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers, Paul says. And so easily, do not be deceived. Deception. I believe one of the biggest deceptions there is in the church, and I'm not accusing anyone, I'm just saying one of the strategies and the, and the tactics that, that the devil uses is deception. And one of the biggest deception that he uses is the grace and love and forgiveness of the Father, that when you go to the Father, He forgives you. Of course, that's the Word of God. But what He doesn't tell you and where the deception is, is about the consequences 
of those sins, the consequences of those action, actions. Because there's consequences to our sins and consequences to our actions. You, so you can keep on sinning and keep on repenting. God will keep on forgiving you. But the consequences of your sin will have a tremendous impact in your physical body, in your spiritual um, heart, in, and even with the people around you. Um, that's just the truth. If you keep on sinning, if you keep on petting stuff in your life, or if the devil might be tormenting some of, uh, some of you, and I know I've struggled with in areas in my life where I really trusted the Lord for breakthrough, and the Lord had to step me through, He had to deliver me through His love and His grace. But I had to turn around and say, Lord, I'm walking in the other way. I'm not going to going to going to compromise on the word of god and that can be in many things so the second perspective is about the the first perspective was about the devil that wants to steal the second perspective is whether you're saved or unsaved the devil wants to steal and destroy you because if you're not saved you're going you're not you're going to spend eternity without the presence of god and when you're saved the devil wants to steal your reward in heaven uh, with where you're going to be rewarded for how you lived life according to the tal talents that God gave you and the, and, the, and, the, and the purpose He gave you. He wants to steal that and He wants to destroy. He doesn't want you to walk into that fullness. So there we get beaten and broken up. And it's important that we understand that these people that's being tormented, they don't even know it sometimes. And, and this can look many ways. I'm not even talking about the physical fleshly sins like addictions and um, adultery and fornication and and, and gambling and I'm talking about addictions that destroy people's life it's got a consequence in their lives I'm talking about little things like lying and 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 talking about people's backs um, which is actually in a sense a little bit of form of of witchcraft we, we you talk step into the, the the trap of the enemy you become because that's what witchcraft is they just speak out against the curse they speak out against people now we that that is people of the light if people speak bad about us um, we are protected by his light but if Christians speak bad about other people, that's nothing, nothing different than speaking critical things over somebody else. We have to be so careful. And this can look many ways. I've got to think, my story is like, you know, I'm, I, I, I've got a good heart. I'm going to use this as an example. You know, I've got a good heart, the one speaking to his friend or her friend. I've got a good heart, but I've got a problem with this person. And then the other one, yeah, I've also got a problem with this person. And they've, they've both got so much of a problem that both of them, without them knowing and understanding, it's not speaking to other people about the problem they've got with, this, with the first person. And this causes division at the end. And I've seen churches being impacted by this, where people is in deception about the impact of their criticisms. And we're not perfect. We, we all can do better in that area. But we have to realize that what we speak, has got an impact and we have to speak life if you don't have something good to say about somebody else rather keep quiet i'm not saying don't come with a solution if there's a problem i don't say we mustn't discuss things and handle things in love and in truth that we have to do um, but then if you want to say something to someone say it to him in love in truth as a brother as the bible teaches us so that was the two perspectives my third um subtitle and, and, and sub message is don't go solo don't go solo. I believe one of the biggest traps the enemy has got is that he takes people, he isolates people. And yes, God can isolate you too. But do you know where you'll see the difference in the fruit? You'll see if it is the Lord or if it's, if it's not the Lord. And we usually when it's the Lord, the Lord word does a big thing in your heart. And it's, it's some form of obedience as well. And God is busy doing something for a season or you're walking. So I've got, that's great. But when it's the, the devil that's isolating you, that means you've usually got a problem with everybody around you. You're the only one that knows we've uh, got the truth or the, the revelation. Or you're surrounded with people that talk the same as you, think the same of you, and you, all of you are critical, but there's no really fruit in your life. So when I say about fruit, I'm talking about progress. I'm talking about growth. I'm not talking about salvation and God's got a plan for your life. I'm talking about walking from growth and glory to glory, growth in the Lord where there's where there's fruit, where we're making progress, either in your character, and some of us, God, God has taken years in some areas in my life. And let me tell you, um, I'm so glad he, he did it. I'm not perfect yet, but I believe there's been progress. Um, I can see fruit of what God has done in my life. I believe the same with you. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, an individual members of it verse 26 here, if one member suffers all suffer together if one member is honored 
all rejoice together. We're not supposed to live life alone. We've got believers. We've got the fellowship of the believers. We've got the church. Do you have a perfect church? No, you don't. There's no such thing as a perfect church. But God chose the church to be the, to, to be the hope for the world. God is the head of the church. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And He chooses the church to be His bride, which is He is busy hope making holy and glorifying for Him. Because the body of Christ are supposed to bring glory to God. And you, each one of you and me, have got a place in the body of Christ. Don't be solo. God has made you a member. Yes, you're a brick in the building. That's why we are called the church. But together, we come together, either physically, if not possible physically, digitally. But we do gather. Do not live life alone. I want to read for you the rest of the story. Luke 10, verse 31 to 37. And by chance, a priest was going down on that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. This is now... He saw the guy beaten up half dead. Likewise, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, who was on a journey, came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion. And came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, the one who showed mercy toward him. Then Jesus said, go and do the same. It's one thing to know the truth. It's another to do the truth. That's why James says, show me your works and you show me my, you'll show me your faith. Don't tell me about your faith. I want to hear and see god in action in your life i want to go to my third perspective and this subtitle i've titled the me my and mine the me my and mine um all of us have the same things if it doesn't matter who you are on earth we're all human beings we all have the same things there's just a difference in how what we've got looks and how we utilize or apply it all of us have got time we just differ in how we spend our time all of us have got goals. We just differ in what our goals are. All of us have, are living a life. We just differ in who we're living it for and how we're living our lives. All of us has got God-given talents. We just differ in what we do with those talents. And all of us has got resources, little or much. We just differ on how we spend and utilize and work with those resources. So all of us has got the same things we just differ in what we do now i don't know about you but I've, i'll never forget and you'll know this if you've got children and if you remember being a child if you take something or you give something to a small child they they want it and they, they want it now and if you've got something and a small child wants it they will take it and if you give it to them you mustn't take it from them because it's theirs so everything they want they get or they want they take because that's a small baby and we're all like oh it's cute and and all of that but it's the same thing spiritually these growth levels and the first level it's mine it's me my and mine all of everything that i've got my time my goals how i live my life my god-given talents my resources it's me my and mine then this is that's a, that's the basic level the image the immature the baby form of of life of being a christian then there's the intermediate one where it's mine but i'll share it all these things that I've got, it's mine, but I'll share it. And then there's a third level, um, which I believe is the level that God wants us to operate on. And that's, it's not mine. It's been given to me by God. And I'm supposed to be a good steward with what God has entrusted to me. So I'm supposed to be a good steward with God-given time. I'm supposed to be a steward with God-given goals, with how I live my life, with the resources and my God-given talents. So if you're married... You can say, but that's your wife. Well, I, that's true. But in a sense, God has given you your wife. Uh, it's your children. Yes, it's your children. But God created life. And your children as God given children to you. You are a steward over your children. It's your money. Uh, it depends on which level you are. Because everything you've got has been given to you by God. It's your resources. But it's been given to you by God. If you think it's you, there is the success story about your money. I'm not talking about hard work and all the effort you put in. If God did not want you to have that, you would not have that. 
Um, so that's something that God has given to you. And you need to be a good steward of all the resources that God has given to you. And that's why I want to compare the priest and the Levite to the Good Samaritan. Because you see the different growth levels in the story. Now the priest and the Levite saw what the Samaritan saw, but they chose not to give their time. They chose not to give their resources. They chose not to give how they live life, not to give their talents. And what they were supposed to do to this man that was lying there half dead, whatever their reason was. Um, sometimes we're so opinionated about it, one another. Yeah, I told you not to walk that close to the, to the offering. I told you not to enter that door. And as a matter of fact, it's very true. If we're telling people and warning people, don't do this. Don't have an affair. Don't go and do drugs. Um, uh, don't go spend too much time with this one. It's, it's unhealthy or um, you need to spend whatever the case might be as this good godly advice that we give people but people don't always listen and they give into the temptation and the enemy comes and kills steals and destroy and then that person is broken marriage is being broken by different parties or maybe not looking after one another or not spending enough time with one another or unforgiveness that's in the heart or whatever the story may be damage or the thief comes and steals how are we sometimes so judgmental about it opinionated about it that we rather have an opinion and be judgmental but we walk right past we go right past we don't stop and help we, we, we need, it doesn't matter whether you was you were right it doesn't matter are you still helping are you still reaching out now i'm not talking about someone that's in the middle of a sin cycle and they persistent in it then they still think they're alive they're like the lost son the project prodigal son that had to go and live it all out and then come back and say, Lord, I need help. Um, I'm talking about someone that needs help. And this can be a saved or an unsaved person that needs help. Because we need to decide who we are. Um, if you look at the, the, the innkeeper and the Good Samaritan, this Good Samaritan came, he gave his time. The Good Samaritan came and he gave his resources. He gave his God-given talents and the way that he lived his life. And... He made a difference and he took personal, he personally took this person to the innkeeper. Now I see the innkeeper and the inn as the church. I see that that's the place where people get restored. That's the place where people get touched. That's the place where people get healed. The church is the hope for the world. That's the place where we take people and invite people that's unsaved or saved or broken or they need God to touch and heal their lives. We take them to the inn. We take them to the church. And the innkeeper is Jesus Christ being the head, but it's the church, the pastors, and everybody that loves the people. What are, what are we doing with our time? What are we doing with our resources? What are we doing with our, with our God-given talents that God has given us? Um, who are we living for? What's the growth level? Is it me, mine, mine? My ministry, my money, my, me, my. And although you've got a passion and God wants to use you, I, I, I've got no, I'm so excited about that as well. But it's not yours, it's His. And it's not supposed to be so. It's supposed to be connected to the body of Christ in one form of another. Matthew 9 verse 13 says, But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Isn't it amazing that when we read through the New Testament, um, all the sinners flocked to Jesus. Isn't it amazing that he ate with the tax collectors? Isn't it amazing that the prostitutes came and fell down in the middle of the Pharisees and started washing his feet with their tears? Isn't it amazing that where Jesus met someone or the woman, and the, 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 the Samaritan woman at the well, where she, when she met Jesus, she had an encounter with Jesus. She went and she told the whole town and said, listen, she invited them. She invited them and said, listen, go, come and see, is this not the Jesus or the Messiah that you have heard? I'm not asking you to go. I said, that's what he's done for me. But why don't you come and see? And that's why I believe when we've got an encounter with Jesus, like the Samaritan, I believe, was a God-given person to, in that situation. He took that person and that to the inn. What are we doing? And are we inviting and saying, I see you've got an issue in your life. You know what? I had an encounter with Jesus. Why don't I invite you to come to my church? Let's see if this Jesus that you've heard about, if you don't meet him there, Let's see if this Jesus that you've heard about or that you're dreaming about, if you don't find him there. No matter what your experience was in the past. Hosea 6 verse 6 in the New Living Translation says, I want, to sh I want you to show love, says God. I want you to show love, not offer sacrifices. I want you to know me more. 
and I want burnt offerings. Mercy over judgment. What are we doing with our lives? What are we doing with the lives and the resources that God has got for us? I'm closing and I'm saying we as members of the body of Christ should be the feet and hands of Jesus Christ. We should be the hope of glory to the world, the church collectively. But when we, each one of us individually in the place that God has called us, if it's a workplace, business place, doesn't matter. We're all shining the light. If nobody knows you're a Christian, then uh, maybe it's time to start telling them and living a life that they can see that this Jesus. I'm not saying go and preach to everyone. I'm saying live a life that people can know you're a Christian, that people can see what is it, why are you always so happy that they can see my second one is, let's reach out to those that is broken. Let's reach out to those that's been through divorces, financial collapse, that's been through addictions, that's been beaten down. Let's be the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's reach out to those that need Jesus to touch their lives. Let's not be just me, me, my, and mine. Let's say, Lord, how can we make a difference? doesn't matter. I'm not only talking about financial help. I'm talking about every, on every area. That we can help and make a difference. That's why I'm saying it's the biggest help you can be in someone's life. It's connecting that person to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And connecting them to a local church. Because that's where they will grow. Not a perfect place. Because I don't know about you. If you're perfect. But I'm not. So the church can also not be perfect. But the church remains the hope of God's glory. I've seen so many people grow. Exponentially. When they're connected to a local church. I've seen people grow faster. When they're even in smaller groups. Or grow groups. In a local church, church, there's an exponential growth. I think it's a principle because we've got people that we can share with. And that's something that's part of our life. But Yuri, I don't have time. And I've got this. That's f We all have. We all just differ in what, how we approach it. And that's why when you're with your time, with your talents, with your goals, with your resources, all of that. We all differ in how, how we go about it. But I want to ask you to put Jesus as not in the number one spot. Let's all grow to the top level where it's not me, me, mine, 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 but I'll share. But the level where, Lord, it's not mine. It's everything you've given to me. I'm so dependent on you. Help me to be a good steward with what you've entrusted to me. Now I'm going to pray. I'm first going to pray for the broken people. Then I'm going to pray for those that wants to grow in the levels of God. Then I'm going to pray for the church. I'm going to pray for repentance for people and attitudes and people that saying, you know, you know what, I've been so judgmental. Um, uh, I want to ask God to help me in this area to be to be live to my full potential and then I'm going to do a salvation prayer so let's pray Father Lord I come to you today and Lord there's so many people in this world that is broken that the enemy has come and, and he's stolen Lord we even the wrong choices and temptations and a lot of things Lord but things just aren't working out I want to pray Lord that they will have an encounter with you right now in the name of Jesus I pray Holy Spirit that you will take that person into your arms that you will come and meet him, that you will come and touch him, that you will fill him with your spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God says it's not the end. He's not the end. But allow him to restore you. Allow him to build back the blocks in your life. Allow him to come and heal you. Allow the church to take you in and make you a member of the body of Christ so that you can be restored in the area that you've broken, in the area that there was brokenness that taken place. I want to pray for those of you that saying, Yuri, I, I'm, I'm me, mine, mine. I realize it now. And help me to go to, Lord, it's not mine, but help me to be a good steward. I want to pray for each one of you that's got the desire right now. I pray, Father, that you will bring the growth in their lives right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that they will make the mind shift and the heart shift that it's not theirs, it's yours, and that they are stewards with what you've given them in the precious, precious name of Jesus. I pray for them right now. Lord, I pray for the church. Lord, it's a beautiful, glorious time for the church. I pray for the church to arise, to be the hands and the feet of Jesus out there and collectively that we will be the hope to the world. I pray, yeah, where I'm praying from, the, from the valley of life, Lord, that the church will be established and that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. In Jesus' name, I pray for the people to be the light of the world wherever they are. Now, right now, if you're feeling and saying, Yuri, I feel bad, I need to repent, I've been judgmental towards someone or whatever, doesn't make a difference. Um, allow God to forgive you and restore you and, and walk in the light. Father, I pray for each one right now in the name of Jesus that, feel, that, that wants to repent from, from judging and me, my attitude. I pray that you will forgive them right now 
in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you that they don't have to feel guilty. There's no condemnation for those that is, that is in Christ Jesus. Forgive them and uh, restore them in the precious name of Jesus. And then I'm getting to the most excited part. If you're listening to this message, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You don't have a day. Today's the day that salvation is knocking on your door. And Jesus wants to take over control in your life. I want you, if that's you, to pray with me. Father, just pray with me. Father, I give you my life. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I believe that you sent the Holy Spirit to live inside of me. Father, forgive me my sins. Forgive me all my sins and set me free in the name of Jesus. And Lord, help me live a life glorifying God. Today is the first day that I can call myself a child of Jesus Christ. I pray for you right now. Pray, Holy Spirit, you will fill them in the name of Jesus. Then if you need healing, I want to pray for healing, whatever it is. We pray and we speak, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And then financial breakthrough, when all your other things are in order, amen. Father, I pray that you will make a way in the purpose that you've called them to be in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please like, share and comment. And share this message with someone on your Facebook. It doesn't matter. I don't want to be famous. We want to make a difference in the kingdom of God. Share this message with, 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 the, with the world. Because we as the people in the church of God is called to be the hope of the world. God bless you. God loves you. He will never stop loving you. And may God be with you. His glorious mercy and grace. God bless you.